Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let's take a quick look at Safari's security settings. So with a lot of talk about internet security nowadays, it's important that you understand the security settings that you have in Safari. So in Safari, if you go to Safari and Preferences, you bring up the Preference window. And there are a lot of different settings in here. You'll find a lot of security settings under Security. Now the first one here is about fraudulent sites warnings. Now Google keeps a database of websites that it thinks are trouble. Two types of websites like that. One would be a completely malicious website. The developers and the owners of the website mean you harm. The other is a benign website. A website that's okay but it's been compromised. Perhaps it's a website that's not being maintained and somehow uh, it's been hacked and there's fraudulent stuff there. Um, so Google keeps a database of this. I rarely see this pop up but you should keep this on uh, because it will save you if you're about to go to a website that uh, has some malicious intent. Now the next group of settings are all about enabling or disabling things in the browser. So at first you've got to enable plugins. The most popular plugin of course is Flash. So if you turn that off a lot of videos not going to work. Most games won't work. Uh, you really disabled a lot of the internet. So you want to keep that turned on. Uh, you want to make sure you keep your Flash updated. And keep in mind that a lot of security problems with Flash aren't with Flash at all. It's simply an installer masquerading as Flash. So it's got nothing to do with this setting. Uh, or it's simply a update that Adobe has issued for Flash so there's never a problem. Adobe fixes it before there ever is one. So having this turned on is perfectly fine and it's really required to be able to surf around at most websites. Now the next two settings are often confused. You've got enabled Java and enabled JavaScript. They're two completely separate things despite the similarity in the name. Java is kind of like a plugin. It's an entire environment there where applications and web pages can exist. JavaScript, on the other hand, is a scripting language that makes web pages work. If you turn off Java, you might not notice much of a difference unless there's a specific website you go to that uses Java. There aren't that many. JavaScript, however, you'll notice it's just about every website, especially really complex ones like, say, uh, social media sites like Facebook will suddenly stop working because they require scripting on the web page for complex functionality. Now for a few days we were all advised to turn off Java. A lot of people mistakenly turned off JavaScript which turned, uh, gave them some problems. But it, turning off Java was simply a stopgap until an update to Java came out that fixed a security flaw in it. That's all fixed now so it's okay to have Java turned on and as always just stay informed about uh, things that are going on with security problems with either Java or Flash or anything else on the internet. And the last setting here is to block pop-up windows. Pop-up windows are usually more of an annoyance than a security threat and a lot of websites know how to circumvent the basic pop-up blockers like in Safari and other browsers. But uh, you might as well leave this on by default. You can also quickly get to it uh, here in the Safari menu or with the keyboard shortcut. Some websites have functionality that requires a pop-up to occur uh, say for sign-ins or for information to give you. So you may need sometimes to turn that off temporarily uh, to view content on a website. And at the bottom here we've got this checkbox for uh, sending non-secure information to a secure website. So what will happen is you're about to send a bit of information in and it will give you a warning saying this isn't secure. In other words it's no longer encrypted between you and the server. Uh, if you're on a public Wi-Fi network for instance and you're sending a password in uh, just know that anybody else in the public Wi-Fi network that it has software that can read stuff in the airwaves can get that. So you want to be careful. Make sure that's turned on so you get that warning. And if you get it in a public place uh, or, or on a Wi-Fi network you don't trust, then you maybe want to go to that website later when you're on a network that you can trust. Now there's more security settings if you go to privacy. Uh, here you've got your settings for cookies. So blocking third-party cookies uh, means that if you go to a website and there's a cookie set by another website, say an advertisement embedded in that page, uh, it'll prevent that from happening. And that's set by default. Uh, if you set block cookies always, you're going to find a lot of functionality on the websites don't work because they rely on cookies to remember who you are, your login information, things that you've done, uh, things like that. Um, and if you set to never, uh, then you're allowing third party websites uh, like advertisers to remember those cookies. There's really not too much harm in doing that, but since the default is this one, I would leave it there. Also, you've got location services here at the bottom. Uh, a lot of websites nowadays are asking for your location. For instance, if you're trying to get movie times, uh, it may just use your location to figure out what movie theaters are near you. Um, so it'll give you a prompt, and you can set how often you see that prompt. 
Now, a really big security setting is under General. Uh, down at the bottom here, you see Open Safe Files after downloading. So, turning that off is what I recommend. And this will prevent when files come and are downloaded from them automatically running. Now, usually this isn't a problem, but it could be a way for malicious software to get through by you simply initiating the download and then it automatically runs. Turning this off gives you an extra step, an extra chance to consider what it is that you're about to run. Same thing if, say, there's zip files, for instance. Uh, you're going to uh, download a zip file. Uh, with this off, it means you have to then manually go into your downloads folder, double click on it, and we'll decompress. So it gives you that extra step, which sometimes can help if you're trying to assess the security risk of something you've downloaded. So there's a look at security settings in Safari. If you use alternative browsers like Firefox or Chrome, you can look in there and there are similar settings for those in preferences there. So it's a good idea to keep all the stuff in mind. Hope you find this useful. Till next time, this is Gary with MacMost Now. Want more video tutorials? Just go to MacMost.com, click on the Videos link at the top of the page, and then you can view all of the hundreds of MacMost videos by category.